The 1900 Wrestling Podcast is brought to you, as always, by everybody who supports us at patreon.com slash 1900 Wrestling. But enough talking about how we do the show. What do you say we just do the damn thing? I want you to call me for all of wrestling's latest news and views. I've been around in wrestling for 35 years, and nobody but nobody knows wrestling like me. Remember the number one. 900 Wrestling. Stupid idiots. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome to 1900 Wrestling. My name is Justin Robert Young. Uh, Joining me as always from Austin, Texas, is Willie Dills Gregory, who who, uh, injured his arm, and now I think you're just going to have to be like Cowboy Bob Orton and just have a cast for the next two years. Yeah, yeah, I can use it as a weapon, you know, you can smash people in the head, and then, you know, it's doesn't DQ me, right? Because no. It's just I have to wear it. Yeah. Yeah. He has to. Yeah. It, it, listen, you go ahead and talk to his doctor if you had a problem with it because because uh, <laughs> it's fully legal. He's got a note. Uh, by the way, isn't that the weirdest thing in wrestling that if you get hit by anything that is not a fist uh, or a or a foot or you know or the 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 floor the ring the mat if you get hit by anything else it's just like instantaneous knockout, right? Yeah, well, you know, but then again, that's like that's like uh, uh, there's even uh, the things go even looser in movies, right? Where you just like, get like one right cross to the to the to the face, no matter what the body weight oh, yeah. of anybody that guy's, like, out for a while immediately yeah. knocks you out for for as long as uh, you know you physically need to be out story wise. It dep- but it depends. Like if it's like a Seagal punch or you know a Schwarzenegger punch, like those, it's like a big dog punch, right? That's sure. like a Superman punch. You gotta those take you down. So. And, and then, of course, anybody who's not a wrestler, too, if they get, like, backed into a little bit hard, a referee, like, they're just Oh, they're done, yeah. Minutes, yeah. No, no, Earl, Earl Hebner is corpsing, you know, if, if you accidentally twerk into him too hard. <laughs> if you uh, look at him funny, yep, they're down. That's it. We have uh, a bunch of wrestling to talk about, both in and out of the ring. Uh, a lot of outside the ring kind of stuff uh a big weekend for ring of honor uh obviously wwe has kind of begun cranking uh uh, into gear bringing uh the 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 shield reunion now in full swing but you know the number one thing that you have here on on the sheet here willie is a backlash that uh, i i don't know uh, i was aware of So, so go ahead and explain your premise here well, okay, so there's uh, Ring of Honor just recently had uh, a pay per view. I think what was it yesterday? Was uh, it yesterday? Glo- Global Wars. Global Wars yeah. in Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ten fifteen. So it was yesterday. Um, but I was, you know, and there was the Bullet Club was a b- huge, huge piece of this. They even had the, the closing of the show uh, had Cody and uh, and you know like all basically all the Bullet Club out there. Um, and Kenny Omega was even there and they did, you know, a giant promo to like finish the show. They bring out, uh, or they were asking to, to, does anybody have a phone? All of a sudden here comes Jimmy Jacobs. We're going to talk more about him later on. Yeah. Uh, so there's just like, you know, all this stuff. It's, it was basically, this was like the quintessential bullet club, like all the jokes all pulled into one. Yeah. They even instead of the two suite, which they're no longer allowed to do, they did, they pulled out the one suite, yes. which is the, uh, you just put the pinky down. Kind of, right? yeah, so, yeah. Um, which I think they should have gone with the shock suite. I think I would have gone with that instead, where you, <laughs> you know, two fingers. Yeah. So, yeah, so but, a, a, a tighter beak with a, I guess it's harder to do, though. It is a little bit hard to do, yeah. But it, it was, so the whole, like, basically this was all the inside jokes, all of the stuff that has kind of been part of the recent bullet club stuff, which is just, you know, all, it's kind of like they're feuding with WWE right now in a way they are. Right? Oh no. I mean, listen to that promo and, and realize how much of it is literally them uh, fighting with WWE. And the difference is, is that before, I mean, every indie wrestler on some level fights with WWE, right? Cause whenever, sure. whenever you say, we have the best fans in the world. What you're really saying is not like everybody else, like not yeah. like the big uh, other organizations of which WWE is universal. 
it, it's a huge part of, of of indie wrestling in general is just making everybody who's at that little show that's not being seen by a bunch of people feel like they're at something special, right? Yes. And it's part of what the fans do. You know, this is awesome, fight forever, you know, all that kind of stuff. Like and, the, and they're this all is, and this is throughout like, hyping the thing they're at. Because right? this is this is throughout entertainment though, right? Yeah, like everyone's sure. like, no, we're the real punk band, not like those a- assholes blink one eighty two, right? Or like, or I liked Green Day before they were all on MTV yeah. and stuff, right? Yeah. Uh it's it's true. I mean, this isn't just this is not just confined to wrestling. This is just in anything at all. If you are a fan of The Walking Dead, the comic book. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, well, this show sucks. You know, it's all about the comic book. Like there's all that kind of stuff everywhere. Yeah. Uh, but this is kind of become it's kind of to the nth degree here with what Bullet Club is doing. They're really just th- this is their gimmick at this point. Well, and, uh, and, and because, you know, Joey Ryan, who I consider a friend of the show, even though he probably doesn't know who we are, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, tweeted out that you know, I wish I had an opponent that would sell for me as much as the WWE is selling for the Bullet Club right now. Sure. Yeah. Where, when you think about it, you know, let's say th- this is not a work. You know, this is not some bizarre trans-promotional work between the Young Bucks and the WWE, right? But let's assume it was. I don't know what they could do more than what they're doing, which is sure. to slowly C and D every little element that they could, right? To fire their friends. There's, there's like, what else could they do if they wanted to make the Young Bucks even bigger than they are right now? No, they are fanning the flames like full. They, they are, they are tossing gasoline onto this fire for sure. But I think this is why I'm starting to see because if you, if you go into R squared circle. Uh, for a long time, you never saw a disparaging word about the Bullet Club. The Bullet Club was, you know, the, the like the new NWO, right? Yes. To all these people, and the and the one they can get behind because it's coming out of you know New Japan. It's coming out of Ring of Honor, and a lot of people kind of look at those as like, okay, if you're into those, you're into real wrestling, right? Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people on Squared Circle really like to think of themselves as like real wrestling fans. They know about everything going on in every promotion. They always talk about how this is the last Raw I'm going to watch. This was so terrible. Yeah. Uh, all that kind of stuff. They love it. Now, all of a sudden, I'm seeing these comments like, Bullet Club has jumped the shark. Well, oh, my God. Everything Bullet Club does is so stupid and lame. Uh, they're, they're just sellouts in the same way they're trying to portray WWE as sellouts because, you know, they now they're selling their shirts and, and Hot Topic and, uh, you know, they're just they're making a ton of money now, these guys. And there was a whole bunch in the – uh, in the promo where Kenny Omega is saying, everybody who hits the like button, everybody who hits the subscribe button, he's like selling the YouTube content in the promo. Yeah. And so I kind of see where people are starting to maybe get a little bit uh, apprehensive about where this might be going and are starting to turn on him a little bit. But I, I don't know. Like, what Do you, do you still feel like uh, Bullet Club is kind of just doing – their best work or or is, oh no or this is the most it. this is the most relevant to me they've been in years since AJ left uh, uh you know I think they really suffered when uh you know Finn goes and they bring in AJ and then not only does AJ go but the uh, but Gallows and Anderson go they were a huge part of it so I think to me now that's when the Bullet Club was the only thing that you really can be. Which is, or sorry, you can't be in professional wrestling, which is boring and skippable. The Bullet Club was kind of boring and skippable for a little bit, and now I think that they're that they're incredibly vibrant, uh, down to the fact that you know we're we're probably gonna get a inter Bullet Club uh, uh, Wrestle Kingdom match between you know Cody and uh, uh, Kenny, which is gonna be awesome. I think that there's uh, there there's there's a lot of really really cool stuff and the fact that I mean come on the the Bucks are in a feud with the with the World Wrestling Federation with World Wrestling Entertainment with Vince McMahon himself and who is going to profit more in yeah. any kind of fight between them I will guarantee you that it is the Young Bucks that will make more money on a, C- a cease and desist letter that comes from the WWE than WWE will ever make in preventing the Young Bucks from making that money. They can. No, they- in fact, the Young Bucks are going over in this feud. Like, right right now, 100%. Uh, 
They are, they are, they are well ahead, right? They're, they're not getting uh, the Bray Wyatt treatment. They are not taking the pinfalls. They're, everything they do is just elevating them even more. And, and I, I'm with you. I think this is, you know, it's a big blow to lose a guy like AJ. It's a big blow to lose a guy like Finn Balor. It's crazy how then all of a sudden, oh, we got the other guy, the best guy. Kenny Omega just steps right in yeah. and we're good to go. Like, they never seem to run out of steam. So, uh, you know, if you think about NWO, which, I, you know, I, I feel like a lot, in a lot of ways, Bullet Club just is modeled 100% after, Oh, right? sure, yeah. Um, but if you think about them, it, it got to a certain point where, you know, they did jump the shark. They suddenly had every single wrestler, like, who were they even fighting against at a certain point? They were just... If it wasn't for Sting, they had nothing else to fight against, right? They had literally taken over. You have to be able to fight against somebody for it to work. Yeah. To come across as these kind of rebels. And who's better than that than the WWE who will never, you know, join? But And by the way, WWE didn't really do themselves a favor if they really wanted to bury the Bullet Club by making Balor Club shirts. Yeah. Because uh, I'm sure a bunch of people were like, what is that? And then looked into it a little bit and realized, oh, well, this is even cooler. Or then so, uh, creating creating a tag team named the Club. Like, yeah, exactly. like, uh, like uh, what other club are they referencing? <laughs> you know, the, the, is it is it a club sandwich? Is it the, 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 the United Club? Like, like what other uh, a club element uh, are, are these two guys that were very famously in this other club? Yeah. And, you know, and like that, I, I can see where people are coming from that maybe they're in their mind when you go to an indie show and 75 percent of the crowd is wearing Bullet Club shirts, then you might start to feel like, oh, no, this is mainstream now. And so now I'm supposed <laughs> to rail against this. Right? I mean, like, like, spoil- when we were in Vegas, how many people, you know, were too sweet in you in the in the lobby? Oh, uh, yeah. A million and a half people <laughs> were, were doing it. But guess what? It's not mainstream. Uh, you know, I don't care if literally everybody in that Ring of Honor show and every indie show and half of the WWE uh, uh, stadiums and arenas are wearing Bullet Club shirts. You explain that T-shirt to your mom, right? Yeah. Like, like, if you have to do it, it's not mainstream. And exactly. She knows who John Cena is. She does not know who the Bullet Club is. So, yeah. yeah. I, 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 to me, I think it's a little premature to be backlashing the Bullet Club, but it's one of those... I'm I'm super cool and I'm on to the next thing, right? Oh, uh, but then, and, and there's a there's a lot of that going around in in our squared circle for sure. I guess that's the thing is I, I could see that argument a couple of years ago or or a year ago, a year and a half ago. Uh, th- that that's when I would say, all right, you know, when it, it you know Kenny was still uh, coming into his own. I, I, th- I thought they did a good transition out of AJ, but it just kind of seemed like, eh, all right, when Adam Page joined or, or sorry, not no, bad hang up, uh, Adam Cole joined mm-hmm. it just kind of felt like well adam cole's just kind of there because he's they just need somebody else and they like adam cole and you know they just need something to do like that that to me was when it felt a little left out now it's great i don't know i think it's really exciting you know yeah it, it's it's uh, uh, uh i feel like it's it's about as relevant as, as it has been in a long time but if anything i would say that an iwc backlash is the surest sign that you know it's working. <laughs> no, yeah, no, I'm with you. I, I I think right now this is it's getting a lot of attention and it's the, and the, for good reason. It is the most interesting thing going on in wrestling uh to me right now. I mean, it's like there's and, and there's a lot you could say about each of these individual guys. Like maybe Cody doesn't put on the greatest matches ever. Uh you could you could you know talk about the ability to talk of guys like you know, like some of the guys in the in the Bullet Club currently, but like when you look, when I saw the guys that were all in that ring, I'm like, all these guys are freaking stars. Yeah, they have just seven guys out there. All of them are stars in their own right. And like maybe Hangman is like the guy who's still kind of coming up, but I think at this point Marty Skrull is like huge in his own right. There's so many umbrellas in the damn crowd. That yeah. like there's not a single like weak link in that in that group. And you look at like NWO, there was always guys in the background who were like. Why is that guy there? I yeah, mean, I, guess I mean, I need think, a lot of guys. You know, uh, uh, that doesn't feel that way with Bullet Club to me. You know, the, the, the NWO is is a different. It, it is a different beast because at the end of the day, the top three guys were always going to be the top three guys because they were the biggest stars. But there's only so much they could work. You know, sure. There's only so much Kevin Nash could go. There's only so much Hulk Hogan's the biggest star. You know, 
possibly ever. Uh, but there's, I mean, if anything, he screwed up because he didn't lose when he should have. Yeah, like he didn't, he didn't let it go. But anywho, uh, like, like think, of, think of like th- this doesn't always work this well either. Too think of aces and eights. Did, did you ever watch any of that TNA stuff when no, that was a big not deal? Not really. I was, I, I wasn't really. That was in my 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 blackout period. That was a blackout phase. All right, so I, I watched a little bit of it, but I was it was close to that for me too. But I remember coming out of it, and it was the big. It was Bully Ray was marrying uh, Hulk Hogan's daughter and all that. But they were like always hanging out in some secret club in the back. You know, wrapping themselves up in, uh, you know, chains and stuff. It was, yeah. It, they were really trying hard to replicate that, and it never quite worked, right? Yeah. And Bullet Club, it just kind of worked from the beginning, and it has continued to work. So, I, I am not on board the, uh, the backlash train. I, I'm, I'm still all in on Bullet Club. I guess the other thing about the Bullet Club that's fun is that they, they seem to be having fun. Like, like they, the part of their brand is. We are guys that are good at our job and we like doing it. And we want you to have fun watching this professional wrestling with us that we enjoy doing and we hope you enjoy watching. Yeah. And like, yep. that's awesome. That's just and kind it of comes that, across that's exactly that, it comes my across relationship. Very genuine, too. It's, it doesn't feel like they're manufacturing that. It's just, it's, they're, they're kind of just pulling whatever they want out and just doing it. And it's all hitting, you know, it's all working. So, yeah, I'm with you. All right. Well, let's. Uh, you, you 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 brought up Jimmy Jacobs, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, talk about that because I don't know how exactly how much is here, but I did want to ask you this. So, for those of you who are not aware, Jimmy Jacobs, who I actually saw his last match in Ring of Honor. I didn't really even know who the hell he was, but he had his last match of Ring of Honor, uh, the uh, WrestleMania weekend, a couple week, a uh, couple of years ago, uh, when it was here in San Francisco. And uh, he goes to WWE as a writer. He had a couple matches there too. Um, I, I like I was looking him up because I, I remember like he looked familiar to me, but I couldn't really place why because I never saw him in Ring of Honor. But he actually fought. Let me see if I can find this again. Uh, he actually came to WWE and fought somebody really big and like a long time ago. Oh yeah, he he won a match against Eddie Guerrero in 2005. Oh my God, Jesus! <laughs> On SmackDown, yeah. Uh, but then that was like basically it. And then he came back as like a member of the Exotic Express for a little bit, and then moved into the creative role as a writer. So gotcha. he's just been a writer for the last couple of years, basically. Now, I don't know beyond what I've heard in interviews with Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho. Everything that Jimmy Jacobs has done, I do well, know. As everybody, he wrestled for a long time in Ring of Honor. I know that. Oh um, no, no, no. I mean, I mean, in in W uh, in oh, WWE. Since he, yeah, since sure. he was I, yeah, I don't really know what he was responsible for there at all. Well, uh, according to interviews with Kevin Owens and uh, and Chris Jericho, Jimmy Jacobs was uh, uh, influential in in their whole friendship angle and breakup. So. He was the uh, the the guy who came up with the list and the whole like you, know, you want to know what what that what what I have it's the pause it right uh, like all all that was apparently uh, Jimmy Jacobs production. Now I don't know that this is just what I've heard. What we do know is that he's fired, and he got fired yeah. because during the Bullet Club's invasion of Raw for being the elite, Jimmy Jacobs came out of the, uh, came out of the, uh, arena and took a picture with the bullet club. Who's he's, who he's known forever. And then posted it on Instagram. This wound up, I guess, rankling, uh, the powers that be according to stuff from Meltzer and pro wrestling sheet, Ryan Satin at the pro wrestling sheet. Uh, so here's my question to you. How much can we really care about this beyond the larger meta narrative of, you know, Bullet Club versus WWE? How like like rationally how much can we care about this beyond this weird meta storyline? Well, I'll I'll say this. I think a lot of people who are WWE fans did, had no idea who Jimmy Jacobs was, right? Yeah. Um so it, to them it's got to be a little bit weird when they find out who he is and then 
Like the, I think the problem that this this makes WWE look pretty petty. I think in my mind, um, and, and I do understand that you know if you're at your job, your new job as a competitor uh, of your your old job, you're actually like literally competing essentially. Uh, although nobody really competes with the WWE at this point. Let's just be honest. But you know you're and you're at your job, you're at work. And then they all come over and then you go outside and essentially, you know, put them over with a picture. I can see why that would be upsetting. But I think there had to be something else going on to, for that to just lead to just firing him. Right. Like it seems a little like an over, you know, an overreaction. I mean, I guess that's the thing, though, is like, how can we even talk about it? Like, we have no idea what his relationship with his superiors were like. We really we have don't. no that's, idea what like, job just, he did. This is the information that we have, and doesn't that just seem a little bit bizarre that that just one one action just is enough to just drop the guy completely? Especially if if what we also have heard that he's a big part of one of the best things that happened on Raw in the last year. I, I, like, I, clearly, he's guys doing good work. So I, yes, I, I think that if we only take that information and yeah. we put it together. Then yes, you can make a very compelling argument to say that this was petty and stupid, and that the WWE should have known better, and that Jimmy Jacobs is a valued part of the product for which we enjoy. Do I know that that's true? Absolutely no. not. No, you don't. But here's the thing: it doesn't matter if if we know that that's what's true. That's going to be the perception of a lot of people. A lot of people are going to look at this now. Because a lot of people aren't going to think deeper than the things that they already know. They're not going to think, oh, there must be stuff I don't know. They're just yes. going to think, oh, my God, WWE fired him just for taking a picture? That's insane. And, you know, that's, you know, in a lot of ways, it doesn't really matter what the truth is. It matters what the perception of most people is, right? So it, it's not a good look for WWE. And, like, and I, I actually haven't, like, read anything about them saying, well, he was also doing this or that or the other thing. So it's not like they're giving us anything else to go on. So, you know, if, if anything, what this actually probably does is makes Jimmy Jacobs a, a bigger name than he ever was on the indie scene. And now he's probably going to have a nice little run if he wants it. But it's also probably a little bit sad for him because I got to imagine writing for the biggest promotion in the world has got to be one of the better jobs you can land in wrestling. Right. I mean, so. he wanted to do it more than he wanted to be a Ring of Honor stars, which sure. is what he was before. Yeah. But I mean, you know, now clearly because he went back and then they took another selfie uh, at the end of uh, the Ring of Honor pay-per-view. Yeah. Now he's clearly embracing it and kind of taking it all in stride. So, you know, he's I, I guess what's going to happen now is he's probably going to get back in the ring and be part of the Bullet Club or something. I, I don't you know, that seems like where we're going with this. And WWE, like you can't really do anything that's going to mess them up. They're going to be just fine. But. There's probably a lot of fans who are not very happy with him right now. So it's just a weird thing. Personally, I don't really care uh, if suddenly all the storylines suck and we never get anything as good as as Kevin Owens and, and Jericho. Then, OK, yeah. maybe that hurts me a little bit. But in the end, there's lots of writers there. There's lots of talented people out there who come with cool stuff. I don't think he's the end, you know, uh, well, and they'll be all of professional wrestling. I guess writing, that's so. the other thing is that like based on. We now have access to stories, both both current and past, of what it's like to be a writer in WWE, right? And and half of all, we might be the only wrestling podcast that does not have at least one co-host that says two or three times an episode, well, when I was writing for <laughs> WWE. Sure. Sure. Uh, and every one of them, almost to a man, even the ones that are really, really far up, like Bruce Pritchard, who was effectively Vince McMahon's right-hand man, right, and could actually, like, talk back to Vince, will tell you that there's really only one person for whom gets their artistic vision on television, and that's Vincent Kennedy McMahon. Like, that's it. So... Was he able to communicate really well? Like, I, I guess that, that, that's that's the thing is I, I don't quite know how much we should care, except for the fact that it seems like Jimmy Jacobs is friends with all my favorite wrestlers. So I guess I like him more. <laughs> yeah, I like I, I I'm just curious as a fan of of all of it. Right. I'm not just a WWE or just an indie fan. I don't really distinguish the two and say, oh, I, this one's better. Uh, they're two different versions of of a product that I really like. And. 
this to me is just this is a cool storyline that I'm interested in following. So I don't know. Like I'm not really losing much. I don't think. Yeah. I'm, if anything, I'm gaining like another piece to this entire WWE versus Bullet Club storyline, which has been riveting so far. Man, what if I just thought of this right now? If if like the Bullet Club or the the Young Bucks like cease and desist on Too Sweet, is WWE just saying, "Hey, look, we're not going to let you make money on our intellectual property outside of us making money on on the intellectual property, but your act really got over." You could really get it over again if you came on over to the dark side. Yeah, now, do you think, though, that they're all kind of at some point destined for it? Because, you know, wrestling works that way, right? That, that everybody redeems themselves at some point. Everybody turns at some point. You, you know, like even the guy, even like Hulk Hogan, right? Like turned uh, at some point, right? It's... And then people kind of come back. That's like the, you know, and this isn't really coming back, but it it's just kind of how the world works in wrestling, right? So, uh, I mean, here's. I feel like at some point they're destined to spend a little time there. Here's what I would say to, based on my totally uninformed opinion. If you want to at some point ply your trade in a football stadium, there is one company that can do that that's it there's not there's a lot of other companies where i mean austin aries just tweeted out that his next uh you know six weeks uh he's gonna make more money than he made in his last six months at wwe uh, on the indies right and a lot of that has to do with his being in wwe Uh, it does right uh but there's only one company that can let you do your they, they can let you ply your trade in a football stadium that's it that's true. Absolutely. All right. Well, speaking of that company, it's WWE. Spoiler alert. And uh, they, we're going to actually talk about, uh, uh, you, uh, we're going to keep this positive. Because the WWE did something that people in general really, really liked. And that was, number one, reuniting the Shield. And number two, making things a little surprising. The way that the Shield kind of was fun and surprising when they were together the first time. So not only are they obviously building up their uh, match at TLC with uh, with the Bar and Miz, but now they've folded in Braun Strowman into the mix. They they dismantled Bra- Braun Strowman. Roman Reigns is going to have a, a steel cage match with him tonight on Raw. But this Shield reunion, uh, how is it for you so far, Willie Dills? Well, I'll say this: it it was we knew it was happening. We knew it was coming. I found it a little bit uh, interesting that they decided to do it as the opening segment of Raw, right? Because where do you go from there, right? It's that's like that's going to be the biggest pop of the night. So it was that was that call was the only thing where I was like, yeah, okay, did it at the very beginning, could have done it at the end, but nothing about this didn't work, that's for sure. And yeah. I am super hyped for what's coming. Uh, I I really like the fact that. Because I think a lot of people, too, are saying if it's the Miz and the Miz Tourage is like their first opponent, then that's not going to feel like there's any qu- like question mark on who wins. Right. Yeah. But then suddenly you bring in Sheamus and Cesaro and you go, oh, OK, all right. Now we're going to just get just an amazing match. Right. Yeah. So I, I love that that little twist was added to the whole thing. Well, and now and- it's, it, 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 it's three on four with Braun, right? Well, do we know that Braun is going to actually be part of that match, or is, is it? This... I, I thought I, I I thought I'd. Uh... Oh, they're adding. They're really doing three on four. I don't know. Somebody, somebody double, somebody double check with that. Uh... <laughs> okay, well that's pretty that's pretty entertaining as well, uh, because yeah, the Shield was like they were the unstoppable force, right? They were just nobody could nobody could beat them, right? Well, and it's like anybody that was screwing around, which is all of professional wrestling, is somebody screwing around. Next thing you know, it could be, you know, uh, uh, Sierra Hotel, India. Sure. Echo Lima. <laughs> What's the D? Delta. The Shield. It's, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely like they can do kind of anything at this point. I, I think people are kind of expecting now a long run where the Shield is fighting against a bunch of other stables. I kind of don't think that's what we're going to get, though. I'm, I'm, Seeing a little bit more like we're going to get a few really fun shield matches 
And then we're going to get something that shakes the whole thing up so that Roman can go along his merry way. No, and... I, I think I think this, they learned their lesson. They're going to keep this the, the, the shield thing around until WrestleMania. Well, I mean, OK, yeah, WrestleMania would be like a logical, but I think we're still seeing. Yeah, it's going to be it's still going to be Roman one on one versus Brock. Right. And then I, I, I think the rumor now is it's going to be like a Dean Ambrose heel turn. And then him and Rollins will now have like kind of a reverse feud from what they had the first time. Uh, Cause you remember, it was kind of funny how when everything fell apart uh, because of Seth Rollins, like they didn't, you know, for a while it was Seth and, and, uh, and Roman, Dean. like, yeah. or, I mean, uh, Dean and Roman looking for Seth. And then it kind of devolved into like just these one-on-one -on -one feuds. Yeah. But like, it's kind of going to be a reversal of that. So that, that could be interesting. We'll see. Uh, yeah, no, this is official. It is uh, The Shield versus Miz, The Bar, and Braun Strowman. Wow. Three That's... on four at TLC. Okay. Good luck, boys. <laughs> I think it's going to be fun. That's a hell of a match, man. That's going to be that's that that's great. It really shows you how strong that roster is right now in terms of how many people they have over. And say what you will about Roman Reigns obviously, but the the reunited shield is that they, they they pulled a Wu-Tang clan. Like they they launched as a group. They all went their separate ways. They all got bigger. Uh, and now they are together, and I think that it's it, it is a bigger, better group for it. They gotta keep that. T they got to keep them together through WrestleMania. There's no way that they can be so stupid if they're going to put the the title on Roman again to not have also the Shield Roman as a member of the Shield versus Brock Lesnar just feels more interesting than. Roman by himself, right? I mean, no, I, I, I'm with you. Um, I I would like to see them approach it in that in that kind of fashion, but I just get the sense that they really want to push Roman as this this solo competitor, right? He was kind of he was the reluctant one to kind of end up joining back up with uh, Seth and Dean. I think they kind of you know they want him to be the star on his own, and I don't know, maybe that's. Maybe that's something that they shouldn't be wanting so badly, but that's the thing that I'm a little concerned with. They should probably just let this play out naturally, give the crowd what they want, because this is what the this is what the people want for sure. This is for sure. Uh, uh, so this is just like a, a TLC match. Is this just going to be like pinfall? But there's just going to be t like a bunch of tables, ladders, and chairs. They're not hanging anything above the ring or anything, right? No, I think yeah, it's just it's not for just title, uh, so. just all implements are legal. Okay, got it. So we're going to see a bunch of crazy spots in this match. Uh, this is going to be a bloodbath. Well, I'll tell you, oh uh, uh, DPW95 says, let's pray they don't lazy book a four-way main event for Mania with all three members of The Shield versus Lesnar. Wait, is that... Th that sounds rad. That doesn't <laughs> sound lazy at all. That sounds, that sounds awesome. awesome. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what, I don't know. Is that Jimmy Jacobs in the, in the, in the <laughs> yeah, chat Jimmy room? Because that's smart. <laughs> Uh, uh, all right. Well, I, would, I would actually really like to see that match. <laughs> here's the other uh, big news of, uh, of of the week, and that is Neville, who resuscitated his career, uh, now all of a sudden is is on uh, apparently on the way out. Uh, uh, this this uh, top cruiserweight talent uh, 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 exodus. It was. Austin Aries, and now apparently Neville uh, uh, was not at TV, has requested his release, hasn't been granted his release. Uh, what do you what? Let, 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 let's let's simplify it because we don't know what's going on backstage. But sure, will you be upset if Neville leaves the WWE? Um, I mean, yeah, obviously I enjoy watching him, but he'll. It's not like he's not going to land on his feet, you know, uh, if he lands at all. I mean, gravity forgot him, clearly. But <laughs> he's he's I mean, he's a huge talent. So I, if he kind of found out from creative that, OK, well, now you're not going to be fighting for the title anymore in this, you know, lesser, quote unquote, division of the cruiserweights. Uh, you know, should he be satisfied with that? Like, how long would it be then before he? kind of gets out of that out of that little kind of spot in the middle of the cruiserweight division. Like, I don't know, maybe that does sound a little bit disheartening to him after all the hard work he put in really building that thing up. I, I think, though, like the, for the WWE, the, the question is, like, did you actually build it back up or were you a good storyline in it? And now we're seeing once Neville joined, 
the cruiserweight division that's when actually like the youtube numbers went up on and for the you know all the cruiserweight stuff people started watching 205 live well I you think, know they're probably looking at it just from a business decision like hey we gotta we gotta push this angle which is working well i, I and that it makes all the sense in the world to me because you know god bless all those guys who are on the cruiserweight classic but you know, they, they had to go from zero to 60, right? All of a sure. sudden, they all joined the WWE at the exact same time. Some of them had been there before, uh, but now here's a division. We also don't ne- really know what it's going to be, and also we're going to give you guys dead crowds that uh, are happening at the end of of SmackDown. So go ahead. And it wasn't yeah. until Neville showed up. That it really felt like, oh wow, this is now Neville gets to be the star. He gets a lot more time, gets a lot more time to talk. He's going to be a bigger focus on Raw than if he was just himself. And this whole idea of like disheveled, scraggly ass beard, like a uh, 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 angry chip on his shoulder, Neville was rad. It was just a cool it, character. It was. I, I'm just saying, like it was rad for guys like us, but it didn't really seem to like really just tick the right box for a lot of the standard WWE fans, right? They still weren't getting, uh, you know, a big reaction, even during Neville's really impressive run as the, as the king of the cruiserweights. Right. Well, and then I mean, all of a sudden Enzo shows up on it and the, you look at the YouTube numbers. It's like gone through the roof. Since well, cause Enzo, Enzo's a star, but I yeah. mean, the, the idea but is Neville, there- I think probably thinks I could be a star if you just let me be a star. And I think that might be, it makes sense to me why he would want to leave. It also makes sense to me why WWE might think, yeah, this didn't really do what we expected it to do, so we're going a different direction. Like both parties are like, I think, totally justified in their actions. If this is, if the story that I've heard is kind of the truth, where he didn't want to be relegated down to a mid card in the cruiserweight spot, and they were like, yeah, we that ran its course, right? It's like both sides have valid arguments here, and to be honest. Neville's going to make a ton of money if he goes to the Indies right now. So I, to me, it's like there's no real loser in this scenario except maybe like huge Neville fans who only watch WWE. No, I, I will say this. I, I do think that there is a lot of money in the banana stand for a longer program with <laughs> Neville and sure. uh, with Neville and, and Enzo. And, and whether it's Enzo cheating yeah, that, to win. Yeah, that burned out quickly, didn't it? Like, yeah. I think that that's, there's, there's more there. Now, possibly Neville agrees, and, and, and they're telling him, nah, but we really want to put the heat on Callisto right now, so we, we have to put you kind of in a, in a lower rank. Then, you know, then, then, then there's that. I don't know. I, I just Who feel like... Who does he feud with, though? And, like, the, like he's, he's destroyed everybody, right? And it took somebody kicking him in the balls to actually, like, win the title off him. So... You know, it's I don't, yeah, like Tozawa that kind of ran its course. Like it's maybe he just feels like Tozawa. Really so I just love the way he said Tozawa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll miss that. But you know what? Maybe Tozawa ends up uh, on the, the Indies too, and they get, we the get to see them go out and, and pull out the full arsenals that they can do. Well, I, listen, I, I, you, you, you're, you're obviously dead right. Uh, there is the no limit to the uh, amount that he is going to light up the Indies because he is a prototypical indie guy, right? I mean, if, if anything, he peaked at the Indies before the Indies were making the kind of money that they're making now, and now he could go yeah. to Ring of Honor. And immediately do a program with Cody or join the Bullet Club and wrestle Dalton Castle and everybody would freak their freak their freak right out, right? Well, we're gonna get to see, you know, like Pac against, you know, Ricochet and Pac against Will Ospreay and Pac. We're gonna see all that kind of well, crazy uh, stuff uh, that they used uh, to do too. Uh, Ricochet, maybe not for yeah. long, because that's the other. Not rumor. for long, but I, yeah, but for a little while longer. Not much though. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, R- Ricochet is out here on Twitter talking about how much fun he had in uh, uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling in past yeah. tense. So uh, it, it looks like he is going to finally get his his wish, and uh, uh, <laughs> that is to have his contract with Lucha Underground <laughs> expire. Sure. Yeah, he's he's finally going to be in, in you know in the football stadiums as it were. Yeah. But but you know it's like I I look forward because if you watch some of those old there is old matches uh, when Neville was known as Pac uh, against all these other like high flyer dudes and well, some of the stuff they did is insane. Apparently, so, uh, the the match that got him signed was him versus Prince David uh, Finn Balor. Sure. Uh, and yeah. and and they both wound up getting signed because it was 
this amazing match. You can go and look that up. Just Pac versus uh, Prince Devitt. All right. Let's yeah, he kind of did everything before he came to WWE, so he's got he knows all the people too. So I guess here's yeah. here's the one thing, and I didn't follow a lot of his stuff in the indies, but like I really, really, really probably I was most passionate and fell most in love with wrestling in this most recent run with NXT and, and really the NXT run of uh, uh Sami Zayn finally getting over on Neville, right? And that was just a great face versus face. Uh, uh, underdog who uh, you know gets right over to the top of the mountain, only to be kicked down the hill so many times, and then finally gets his uh, his his one big victory. And then how they spun that right into Kevin Owens was just brilliant and amazing, and it was awesome. And even then, Neville was great because he was a great worker. This is the first time that I saw Neville over these last couple months where I was like, that man is the total package. Like, he's mean, he's got a character that I can have different opinions on, he can be a heel, he can be a face, but I still know he doesn't shave every day because he's got a scraggly-ass <laughs> beard and and he thinks that, uh, uh, you know, uh, everybody overlooks him and because we all do, because he's tiny, he's, he's three foot seven inches, right? But he is chiseled beyond belief and can probably outwork anybody in the company. Like, everything came together. And I just hope that in the indies, you don't have to have everything come together. You know, it's, now yeah, you're seeing true. a lot more guys that do it, but you really just have to wrestle well and yeah. be indie famous. That's yeah. really all you have to do. And I just hope he keeps going with that if he does wind up leaving. So the the era you're talking about was kind of like me getting back into wrestling in a big way, too, because I was I started watching it again before NXT was like I'd come back into it before NXT was like kind of hitting its stride, which is like, what, 2012 ish, 13 ish, something like that. I was I had already kind of started getting back in WWE and that's where I discovered NXT. And you remember at that time, guys from the main roster were like coming to NXT to yeah. fight them. So I remember very well, like Cesaro, Neville and stuff like that, like that. Those matches were insane. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, it was, it was just his work rate. Right. It was just like this is a guy who does amazing things. But I think he's yeah, he's proven that he can do kind of all of the things that wrestling requires. And uh, yeah, I hope that he doesn't just throw all the character out for sure. I, yeah. I'm with you on that. I hope so. All right. Let's go ahead and get to our philosophical question of the week. Willie, go ahead. So there's a big thing in in, uh, in wrestling. People always talk about the pushes. The pu oh, give this guy a push. Give that guy a push. Why is this guy getting a push? What is who's going that guy? Like, there's always this stuff about people getting a push, as if the wrestler didn't do anything themselves to push themselves. Right? Yeah. It's always something that has just come down from on high. Here, here, I present to you your push. Right? And we've heard many times. Things like Vince McMahon saying, oh, nobody's grabbing the brass ring or whatever, like all that kind of stuff, right? Um, so people do really believe that it's almost, it, it almost seems like in some people's minds, I think it's just arbitrary, right? Like that they just pull a name out of a hat and they're like, Jinder Mahal is getting a push. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I was kind of wondering, like, have you ever in your life felt like you just got a push? That felt kind of arbitrary because I think that this this it's funny. Like I want to I want to take wrestling things and apply them to real life in ways that maybe we didn't think of our lives before. Yeah. Was there ever a time where you were just like I just got to push? Like wow, that was weird. Where did that come from? Uh, I I I do I do. Uh, when I was first uh, going to college, I, uh, I I knew I I was involved in like my high school student newspaper and everything, and so I knew I wanted to be involved in. I was going to school for newspaper writing. I, I knew I wanted to just do it. I had heard that there was a good student paper in Syracuse called the Daily Orange. So I just showed up kind of looking just to write. You know, I just am like, hey, like, it's me old wet behind the ears uh, uh, kid from Florida. And, and I just want to give uh, I want to see if I can write. And they're like, I guess I, I had I'd gone there asking for a job thinking that like, that they, they would just put me to work wherever they could, that they were this well-oiled machine, right? Now, I wound up finding out later that there was kind of reasoning for this, but 
they were in desperate need for just warm bodies to do a million different jobs. So immediately, I applied for an editor position. I didn't wind up getting it, but they were like, hey, uh, apply for this other thing, not knowing that like I was going to get it because they desperately needed people. And so like all of a sudden, I go from I'm just kind of looking to get involved to now I'm drawing a paycheck and I have a, a, a five-day-a-week gig yeah, you're like there all the time. Yeah, I am now a, a professional journalist in, in that I am getting money to do it, and uh, like I, I felt like, wow, I guess this is a thing. I, I didn't know. There's literally they had no idea on how uh, uh, on on uh, you know, figuring out whether or not I had talent or if I was good. Like I just I got the push. I was just on the main roster. All of a sudden, and I was and luckily I did a good job, and I figured things out. I realized that that kind of uh, that kind of uh, a call up, as it were, was probably more common than you might otherwise think. But uh, but yeah, no, I, it was the first time that I just felt like I don't deserve this, and yet here I am. Sure, uh, the bright right lights place, are right on. Time, Let's start tap dancing. Well, so now, do you think so? Because th- I also hear a lot of times in wrestling, people say he got a push he didn't deserve. And uh, that's why it failed, right? Like, this guy wasn't ready. Yeah. So I guess my question is, like, do you think that that's actually true? Because, like, I, I think uh, you can be not ready and still make the most out of a push, right? It's really just about, like, what you end up – because, you know, obviously, like, you can be a quick learner. You can be a, a slow learner or whatever. But if you just kind of do everything you can with it, then it will work, right? Like, pushes are supposed to work. Well, okay, but let's. Th- this is actually. Oh God, I love these philosophical questions <laughs> because ultimately, I think that this is universal. This is life. Yeah. That that a a push in wrestling, as we understand it, is a, a opportunity to succeed, whether or not you are ready. Yeah. And in life, there are two kinds of people: people that are made excited by not knowing where they're going and people that are terrified by not knowing where they're going. And, uh, you know, once you get into rare air, once you all of a sudden are punching above the weight class that you were at before, either you're going to say, Oh my God, I'm overmatched for this. How do I get matched? Or you say, I'm overmatched for this. Why can't they slow it down? And, and the people that are the former, I think succeed more. And the people that are the latter, you know, you, you see almost a, 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 a retrograde a little bit. Yeah. And honestly, when, when you get the push and you're not the type of person that can handle it, you end up yeah, following lower than you were before. And then you you end up, in a sense, uh, kind of spoiling future pushes. Right. Like and we see this in wrestling, too, where people people get the push. They get the you know, here's your opportunity. It doesn't work. They don't do what they're supposed to do with it. And suddenly they're just like never heard from again. Yeah. Right. And you're just like, where did that guy go? And then you find out he's like back on the indies and, you know, in uh friggin' gymnasium somewhere. And it's, you know, like I remember, I, I would say like <laughs> Which, my push. Uh, uh, by the way, by the way, uh, unrelated. Sure. Uh, uh, the uh, show in the Cow Palace will involve a uh, championship match where Jeff Cobb will defend his APW championship against Jack Swagger. Wow. As we saw, as we saw set up, and I'm so pumped! Everybody, wow. come on out to the APW Cow Palace show. I'm gonna be, it's it's gonna be great. That's pretty awesome. Uh, but like, okay, so I would say like my push was, you know, the instance, right? Like when yeah. Scott, uh, when Scott, like when Randy left, and but the thing is, is like I was thinking about this, and I was trying to think of like pushes in my life that I felt were like undeserved. But at that time, I was I we had taken the AIE podcast and like turned it into something that people cared about. When before it was just like people didn't really know what to do with it, right? And it was yeah. the hugest guild in the World of Warcraft, and uh, you know there was a lot to talk about there. And the show before it was it wasn't bad; it just wasn't really representative of like what you could do with that type of a show, right? So in a lot of ways, it was just that like Scott had kind of discovered that that show was had had gone somewhere, and who was responsible for it? So I felt like okay, I, yeah, I deserve this, right? Uh, But I think that the feeling of suddenly feeling like I almost wish that I felt at the time like I didn't deserve it yeah, because it would have changed things in a huge way for me, I think. 
Like, because uh, I, I do remember the, when I got hired, I was back in college. Uh, I'd gone back to school because I was like, I, I just want to have a radio degree. I want to have a degree in broadcasting. Uh, so I went back and then I was working at Apple just like as a salesman and whatever, like just doing whatever stupid thing at Apple mm-hmm. just to make money while I was in school. And a guy walked in, I sold him an iPhone, and then he hired me to work at like a tech startup, right? Yeah. I remember that feeling of being like, yeah, I have no idea what I'm doing here. Yeah. Uh, but that being like, I, like I went home and like worked on it and worked on it and worked on it until like I was a core member of that team, right? And so it's almost like the push that you feel like you don't deserve. If you can become that type of person or you can you know, bring that person out of you, that is the overachiever that was always in there that you just didn't have the opportunity to show. That's almost like a, a better way to to really like push yourself and get the best out of yourself than the push that you feel you deserve. A lot of times you feel you deserve it, and then you coast, right? Oh, uh, God, and in yeah. some ways I coasted a little bit as a podcaster for a while. Uh, it helped me in a lot. Of, like I think like the, the you know the tack becoming the as popular as it was was like my actual push because the instance I was just kind of like I, I, I'm here. I'm ready to talk World of Warcraft. And it got me like people to know who I was. But it was those pushes where I wasn't really ready. Right. Like I'm going to create a show from scratch with Garrett and Jocelyn. Yeah. I'm going to get a job at a tech startup. That I don't even know what the hell. I, I don't know how to write code. I don't know any of this stuff. Right. And I'm expected to jump in and be a valuable part of the team. Those were huge moments, I think. And uh, it's like the push that was most obvious to me. The more I think about it, I'm like, yeah, that was that was when I felt I deserved. So didn't really impact me personally, like my personality as much as some of these other things. It's like the fish out of water scenarios show you who you really are, you know? Here, spoiler alert, kiddos, life is discomfort. Yeah. And the more you don't repel yourself from it, but understand it and process it, uh, the better off you're going to be because... Yeah, and absolutely. And, and also, like, the like look, don't look for the obvious moments in your life look for the ones that you didn't see coming and uh yeah. and and recognize those as like big big changers game changers because you know like i yeah i'd look at a guy like gender and like a lot of people say oh he's not doing what he's supposed to do with this push he still sucks and i'm like well look, gender before is definitely not gender now he definitely stepped into this role yeah uh whether you like his wrestling style or not really doesn't have anything to do with how much the man has improved as as a product right so the, 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 the question's going to be, when they take away the big Jumbotron and they take away the Singh Brothers, how much of there is, 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 is still is the new gender? That, that'll sure. be the test to see how far he's come. Hey, by the yeah. way, we, we, didn't, we didn't get to this, but uh, it would be remiss if we didn't mention uh, Heel Sami Zayn. What, what, was your, what was your impression of Heel oh, Sami Zayn? I really enjoyed it. Uh, the... I'm not 100% on board with the raising of the hands at the end. That was a little bit weird, but uh, the the promo made so much sense. And like this was the this was the thing I didn't want them to do was go back on it or yeah. you know, not quite get the character right. And I feel like they really got the character right, which was just yeah, I'm doing the right things and it ain't working. Yeah, you're doing all the wrong things and it's working. So I'm going to start doing the wrong things and let's and you know let's fix this. It was exactly where that needed to go, and now we'll just we'll see. You know, they don't have Jimmy Jacobs anymore to write this great stuff, so we'll see if they can sustain it. But so far, so good. So although, far, so although good I guess Jimmy Jacobs, Jacobs was back on Raw because uh, because uh, you know he was out there for for the Bullet Club. So who knows? Mm. Uh, yeah, I thought it was great. I thought it was great. I'm excited. I, I just want more hijinks, more more sure. best friends hijinks with them. High jinking it up and uh, and 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 getting getting all wild. This is a push that is deserved, by the way. Sammy Sammy's been oh Jesus Christ, you're you just, ain't whistling Dixie. Yeah, he's been putting on great matches forever in like the the mid card. And uh, like I was, it's funny somebody posted something about Kevin Owens has been on every single pay per view since he debuted. And I'm trying to think of the Sammy Zayn pay per views. It's like maybe three or four, right at this point. Yeah. Uh, he really has not been showing I mean, Kevin up Owens, anything, but like Raw is like a comedic foil for people. Kevin Owens, talk about somebody that was ready for the push. Yeah, Kevin Owens, seriously, ready for the push. Every yeah. little bit of gas that he that that guy has been given, he has taken it and uh, uh, really just done. 
Wow. Yeah, incredible so much. work. By the way, here's the, the last point I want to make about the push. Is yeah. I think that the other thing that, that happens is a lot of people see someone else get the push and they feel like yeah, that guy just got lucky and got pushed, right? Uh, I, I like I want people when they see, like let's say somebody else in your workplace seems to keep getting promotions and you feel like it should be you. Uh, maybe instead of being jealous or whatever of that person, think about why maybe they're getting that push. Maybe they are doing the right things and maybe there's something that you could be doing differently that, to earn those pushes right in life. Like sometimes it is like Justin's the right place, right time, but you also showed up and applied, right? Like you did the thing you did yeah. the one part that you could do. Yeah. Like always think of the thing that you could be doing that you might not be doing and not like what the other guy isn't doing that is making him not deserve it. Like don't worry about what that guy's doing. Do do the thing you can do. The next thing you can do, right? Knock on doors, and, talk to people. Uh, hey, look, I've said this a million times, and uh, and Brian loves quoting me on it. But you know, talent doesn't fear talent. If you want to be surrounded by other people that will benefit you, uh, here, this is every field I have ever known, right? Uh, uh, and and the competitive ones, like the independent creator, or the like, the the ones that that feel very zero sum. There is a general populace, right? People learning their footing, doing it every once in a while. Then there's a real backbiting kind of layer, and that's all the crabs uh, grabbing each other, so just one doesn't get to get out of the pot, you know, kind of jealousy. And then right past that. It's like that's the smog level, and then there's pure oxygen right past that. The top of every field are a bunch of people that know what that struggle's like and have succeeded more because they have purged the shitty, jealous people out of it. You know, the top, 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 and and that's what you want to be, is you want to recognize yep. talent and you want to be good to other talent, uh, do good to other people in your life that are that are good. Think about how you can help them, and they will think about how they can help you. Universal fact, in my opinion. I agree. All right. Let's get into our most popular segment of the show, and that is our shitty melodica challenge. We're running low on these, so we're going to need the maestro to tune up the melodica uh, uh, one more time if we, we want to keep this going. Let's play last week's shitty melodica challenge. I mean, my only guess for this one was Hornswoggle, because it just sounds like a little Irish ditty. Uh, you are dead right. That is indeed the Swoggle, as wow. he is known out Vince on McMahon's the Vince McMahon's son, Hornswoggle. Exactly. The, uh, uh, the, uh, he, was, he was the anonymous GM, right, under the ring? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, God, that was, uh, that was a dark moment in wrestling history. Yeah, man, tell you what. Uh, happy that it was part of my blackout period. By the way, yeah, J.C. Galhoun yeah. saying it's game recognized. It's funny when you watch those segments, you know? <laughs> J.C. Galhoun saying game recognized game, Grandpa. Yeah, uh, listen, I'm not saying it's an original thought. I'm saying that I say talent doesn't fear talent, all right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm with you. All right, By the way, there, there's, a, there's a funny stable of wrestlers who are in my blackout period, and... Uh, the other day, it's like Carlito was just always one of them, where I was just like, who is this guy again? And then you look and you're like, man, he wrestled everybody. Yeah. Everybody. He's, he's still going, by the way. Spits he's, in uh, the face. He's still doing it. Of those who do not want to be cool. Uh, all right. Here we go. This is our this week's Melodica Challenge. <laughs> All right, one more time. Wow. Not a lot to work with there. All right, folks, mm. if uh, uh, Dills, you have any have any thoughts? Oh, man. Uh, I know. I think I'm so far away from this one. It, it feels like the 
the instrument is probably supposed to be guitar. I just need to I need to find the that rhythm. Cause there's, there's literally like there's two notes in that. <laughs> da da dun da da dun da da dun da da dun dun. So yeah, I gotta I gotta find it. I mean, I think I think you just nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I'll tell you what. If uh, you want to figure it out, go ahead. I think I got it. Uh, 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 go ahead and uh, uh, become a patron, huh? Why don't you? Patreon dot com. P a t r e o n dot com slash one nine zero zero wrestling that is where you can support the show and every monday not only do you get this program but you also get a downloadable copy of our shitty melodica challenge and you get to find out what the answer is go ahead and uh kick in a little bit every single dime that comes in goes to our wrestle fun uh, where uh, we use that money to go to wrestling shows. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, War Games tickets went on sale on uh, 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 this week, Dills. Uh, did, did you uh, entertain any uh, thoughts about uh, getting tickets down there in Houston? Uh, I'm willing to still entertain thoughts. I actually I was a little distracted uh, with, with injuries. Oh, but, the injury, uh, yeah. I, I am definitely into entertaining these thoughts. Uh, well... Tell you what, maybe maybe we'll have to figure that out. That's uh, very very exciting. And also, people were telling us that we were we were mixing up War Games and World War Three. Uh, they both do have war in the titles. Uh, World War Three was the three ring yeah battle royal, uh, but uh, we, we we correctly described War Games as being invented to have people face off against the four horsemen. It, it's basically stable wars. Uh, the 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 concept. It was Dusty's stable wars. Uh, but anyway, we can uh figure that out as we go along. That about uh wraps it up. Uh, Willie Dills, what do you got going on? Uh, just check me out on Twitter. I'm at Willie Dills. Twitch.tv slash Willie Dills is where I stream the Hearthstone and uh, probably some Eternal, which is another card game that I've been really getting into lately uh so yeah just check me out there it's streaming we should be streaming about every day now uh I, i'm i'm well enough as long as i keep this arm up in the air most of the time i'm well enough to now uh, actually <laughs> sit in front of a computer and not feel absolute discomfort all the time so yeah well should i'll get tell back you what, on the on the horse here now is the time if you uh would like to be a a, a good brother to willie dells gregory come on by a stream Give him a, give him a few bits, maybe sub him up, if you uh, if you if if, if 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 you will. I know that this week specifically, it would be uh, uh, greatly 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 appreciated. So uh, yeah, uh, as for me, you can always go ahead and find me twitch.tv slash Justin R Young. We stream this gosh darn program every Monday at three p.m. Pacific time. That is six p.m. Eastern time, and um, that's about it. That's about uh, that's about it. Uh, until next time, my name is Justin Robert Young. He is Willie Dills Gregory. This is One Nine Hundred Wrestling. Be dialing. I want you to call me for all of wrestling's latest news and views. I've been involved in wrestling for thirty-five years, and nobody, but nobody knows wrestling like me. Remember the number One Nine Hundred Wrestling. Stupid idiots. They call me Hara. Is cooking. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>